all, this book is going to get weirder and weirder and weirder and weirder, and I just can't take it. Hello, guys. I'm a very ready super, super, super reader, super reader, very super reader, Adam Ernest, premiering an Adam Reads, doing the goes laughing moment. Okay, that's it. Beverly right here, everybody. Welcome to chapter 13 of Beverly right here. I, I, I don't even know what to say. Like, this book is absolutely the weirdest book I have ever heard of. Not the weirdest, but it's just the, the ending of chapter 12 was very weird. They were holding hands. Doesn't that sound a little gay? Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's continue. Chapter 13. Well, look at that," said Freddie. "You wore a different shirt today. It made it must be a, na a national holiday or something." She was sitting at a table in the dining room, smoking a cigarette and rolling silverware up in blue paper napkins. Her hair was piled high on her head. The sun flashed off the silverware. The room was empty except for Freddie and the mountain of napkins and another mountain of forks and spoons and knives. Beverly stared at Freddie. "What?" said Freddie. "Nothing," said Beverly. I take it back about you being a model and all, said Freddy. You must have good legs and good hair and white teeth, but you're not friendly enough. You gotta be friendly to model. People want to look at somebody that knows how to smile. Someone who smiles like they mean it. Freddy smiled a big fake smile like that, said Freddy. That's how you do it. It, that's how you do it. Stop, she, she stopped smiling, took a long drag off her cigarette, and blew the smoke up in the air. Mr. Denby came out into the dining room. Good morning, Beverly, Annie. He said, and right, said Beverly. She went back into the kitchen. Went back to the kitchen. Doris was at the sink. Scrubbing something, Charles was mopping the floor. It occurred to me last night you might not know what tipping out means, said Doris, without turning around. What with, what with you being young and wet behind the ears? Charles didn't know things were when he got there either. What? I told you this book is getting weirder and weirder and more hard to understand. I didn't know nothing, said Charles. Still, don't. You're learning, said Doris. Now, Aunt Beverly, listen, tapping, tipping out means the Barbie gives you a percentage of what she gets in tips. Ten percent at least. How much did she give you yesterday? Two dollars, said Beverly. Doris snorted. What, said Beverly. Pay attention to what's going on, said Doris. See what people leave on the table. Know what things cost. Pay attention. Nobody watches out for you in this world. But you're watching out for me, said Beverly to Doris. Wide sold back, aren't you? Doris snorted again. Charles kept mopping the floor. He laughed a low laugh. The la lunch rush was started... The lunch rush started slow, but by half past noon, Mr. C's was full of sunburned kids and dazed parents. Beverly was almost running with her bucket full of dishes, trying to keep up Freddy. Keep up. Freddy was smiling, her fake smile, moving from table to table, and Mr. Denby wearing a tie with a frowning fish on it kept escorting more people in. The same thing happened that had happened the day before. Everything slid out of Beverly's head. Slid out of Beverly's head. Bony and instant hand. The memory of her father and the rocket launch, the VFW and the bird's nest, Buddy's grave and Ramey's question about how they were going to survive without her. <coughs> Beverly forgot. She didn't think. She just worked at one Worked at one point, a fat old woman, fat old man with a cigar in his mouth pinched her on the butt. You're kidding, said Beverly. Right, he's sorry, he said. That just loose, Freddie told her. If you don't complain about him, he tips more. Tips who more, said Beverly. Which, sh which shut up, Freddie up. Which shut Freddie up. After lunch was over, Freddie gave Beverly two dollars. It's, is that my full ten percent? Said Beverly, what are you talking about? Beverly stared at her. 
Freddie rolled her eyes and then she peeled three more dollars off a big roll of bills. Are you satisfied now? She said. Sure, said Beverly. Thanks. Uh-oh, said Freddie. Here comes Jeremy. He's early. A man who walked, who man was walking across the almost empty dining room. He was big and dark haired. He was wearing a red tank top and a thick gold necklace that wrinkled in the light. Freddie waved and smiled her model smile. Hey, baby, said she said, hi, Jeremy. You're early. Who's the new girl? He said, tipping his head in Beverly's direction. Up close, Beverly could see that he wasn't that old. Seventeen or eighteen, maybe. He had a toothpick in the side of his mouth. He waggled up and down when he talked. I told you about her already, said Freddy. You never listened to me. I listen to you, said Jeremy. Jeremy. That's all I do, listen to you. He wiggled at Beverly. Hi, new girl. Jeremy's shoulders were hairy and his nose was big. He looked like a wolf in a cartoon. He remembered. He reminded Beverly of her mother's boyfriend, stupid and despite and sometimes mean. What's the new? What's What's the matter, new girl? Said Jeremy. Cat got your tongue. Beverly Annie called Mister Denby. He was standing at the threshold, threshold and to the dining room. He looked tired. Jeremy took the toothpick out of his mouth and used it to salute Mister Denby. Good afternoon, sir. He shouted. Hello, Jeremy, said Mr. Denby. The world treating you okay, Mr. Denby, said Jeremy. He put the toothpick back in his mouth. He grinned. How is the fish business, sir? It is good. The fish business is just fine, Jeremy, said Mr. Denby. Beverly Annie, if I could see you in the office. Bye-bye, Beverly Annie, crowned Je Jeremy. As Beverly walked out of the dining room, bye-bye. Have a good time in the office with Mr. Denby. Beverly Annie. Okay, I gotta make this fast. Mr. Denby ushered Beverly into the office and closed the door. He turned to her face. He tugged at his fish tie. Don't I don't like him, said Mr. Denby. That boy that boyfriend of hers is not good news. He sighed, Of course, Freddie isn't exactly good news either. She's a jack she's a crackerjack waitress, though very motivated in that regard. He sighed again, but I feel like she's prime to take a wrong turn. It warms them how people can take a wrong turn and never right themselves. I hope that doesn't happen to you, Beverly Annie. Uh uh, said Beverly. You think about these kids of uh, you think about these kinds of things when you're a parent, said Mr. Denby. You do a lot of thinking about wrong turns. When you're raising children in case we're going to get the paperwork filled out just as soon as I locate the paperwork. But in the meantime here's some cash I thank you for your good work. Thanks, said Beverly. She took the money. I'm guessing that you'll come back tomorrow, said Mr. Denby. Sure, said Beverly. How's your grandmother? I don't have a grandmother. I thought you said you had a grandmother. No, said Beverly. Well, maybe it's just that I saw you in the car with your grandmother yesterday. You didn't, said Beverly. Oh, said Mr. Denby. He gave his fish tie another tug. My apologies. I wish for things to be a certain way, and that is how I see them. Wishful thinking, I suppose. You would call it a person, a like trait, that you might wipe to despair. He sighed. I have three daughters, you know. Yeah, said Beverly. You told me. Right, said Mr. Denby. He clapped his hands. I'm certain that I do. I did well. Have a good afternoon, Beverly Annie. Enjoy the sunshine. I will see you tomorrow. Sure, said Beverly. See you tomorrow. This is the most weirdest book I've ever read. It gets weirder and weirder every chapter. I mean, holy crap, but, I mean, I would like to read freaking Kate Demi Dick Emilio's book because it would make see more than this. I mean, this book's alright because it's Kate Dick Emilio. She can't make a bad book. But this book certainly kind of sparks a weird vibe, you know? It's like weird. Like the touching on the butt part? Yeah, that's weird. I can't believe this book is getting weirder and weirder and I just can't take it.